Thank you for attending today's webinar. We want to verify the wave load on the jacket structure. We will see how to generate the wave load for the such marine structure. So in this structure, how to make the wave load? This is the procedure how the program will determine the wave load based on the input values such as the elements, wave load information, and the current information. And then the value of the wave load is going to be calculated. It will be applied as the nodal load. And both dynamic and static nodes can be considered. Before going to the dialog box, I want to explain briefly about the terminology and the calculation of the program. The, let's say this is the function for our wave load. And this is the wave height. And this is the uh, wave celerity. And this is the one length, the wave length for this one period. And the wave period t can also be specified. And the wave altitude which is the eta value. And it will be based on the zero, which is the mean sea level. And the H value will be water depth. So how to calculate the wave force? Wave force will be the summation of the drag force and inertial force. So drag force can be determined as can shown here, and the inertial force can be determined shown here. In the determination of inertial force, so volume of the pile will be considered. And in calculation of drag force, pile diameter will be considered. And the coefficient for the drag force or inertial force can be specified by the user. So what needs to be defined for this in the program? First of all, we need to have the water weight density and the water depth, which is based on the mod line to the um, mean sea level. And for, the, for calculating the drag force and inertial force, this coefficient needs to be specified. The wave load in minus seven is calculated based on the seven different wave theory, as you can see from this list. Every wave or every wave mean position or the Stokes wave or stream function with the current effect or without current effect, and conoid wave or solitary wave. So user will specify desired wave theory and also corresponding parameter from here. And then the wave load will be determined. Even though we specify the wave theory, Uh, it doesn't mean it will be always valid. Defined wave theory is based on their own basic assumption. So in order to apply this wave theory in the structure analysis, the engineer needs to verify the theory considering the wave length, wave height, or depth. For this validation, my decibel provides the, uh, this graph. So we can see where is our current position with the, this guideline. We can verify, we can validate this wave theory with the Dean graph or Le Mehout graph. And if we want to consider the 
uh, current effect. The velocity of the current effect can be specified from this function. Different velocity for the current can be specified for each of the elevation level. And the self-weight and also the variance load can be considered with this check option. And crest position can also be specified. So let's try to make this model, this wave load in the program and check the results. So this is the um, jacket structure as mentioned earlier. And in this structure, it is composed of the top plate and the beam element at the bottom. And this top part is the concrete and the bottom pile is the steel. And different diameter was used for this pile with their depth. And how to consider this boundary condition? It was uh, restrained, this five DOF, excepting for this uh, jet direction. Gravity direction, point spring support was considered with this certain stiffness. As you can see from this table. After that, how to enter the wave load? My decibel provides the function for the wave load here. So we can enter the wave load. We're going to define both uh, stating load and time history load. For the time history load, which is checking the dynamic effect, it will be performed with the linear modal time history analysis. And we can specify the what weight water weight density. And this is for calculating the drag force and inertial force. Specify desired coefficient. And this is the seven different wave theory. We are going to use the stream function with current effect. And specify desired function order and the wave direction, and wave height, period, after specifying this, we can verify, validate whether our function, our definition is within the breaking limit or not. This red line represents the breaking limit. Okay, so it is valid and we're going to use it. And we can specify the current profile. We have used the uh, wave function, wave theory as the stream with current effect. So current velocity will be applied from here. And with the different elevation, depth of the water, velocity will be specified. OK. So uh, required data has been all defined. Once I click OK, program will try to generate the wave loads, as you can see. 
And if you see from here, we can check our wave load function in the extraction force yz and moment xyz. And this wave load value can also be verified from this table. The velocity or the acceleration in both horizontal and vertical direction. With the different depths of the water level, we can check the value of the wave load. This value can also be exported into the Excel file. After generating it, so we can see how the wave load will be applied. It will be converted into the nodal load and applied as you can see from here. And for the dynamic effect, if we want to check dynamic effect, it is also, it can be considered with the different function the wave load function and also the dynamic nodal load with the different arrival time. So this definition has been generated or done. As we are going to use the eigenvalue analysis since it is the linear modal time history analysis and also for the dynamic analysis we need to consider the mass of the structure and then we are going to perform analysis So both daily and time history analysis will be performed. Then we can check the results. Similar for the reactions, for checking for the staining analysis first. and also deformation for this static analysis and what is the maximum and minimum deformation accord for S direction this node has the maximum deformation and also we can check the forces So beam diagram can also be verified. Also, we want to check the dynamic effect. For the dynamic effect, we can see the maximum displacement from the time history analysis. Maximum deformation in extraction occurred for this node 141. And what about acceleration? Maximum acceleration occurred from this node, 50, 56. In order to check more detailed results, we can make the graph. So if we go to the time history graph, we can specify the these two nodes, 141 for the displacement history. in X direction. Also for the acceleration, 50-56, and also based on the ground motion in X direction. We can see the detailed uh, history graph with the time domain. starting from the displacement. So maximum displacement occurred in this node, and we can see how it is going to be changed.
and for the acceleration similarly we can check it from the graph so how this acceleration is going to be changed with the different time domain with the maximum value and this is based on the time domain even you can check it with the frequency domain with the maximum acceleration so with the 4.6 frequency the maximum acceleration occurred so that's for the wave load in the marine structure as we checked so program can automatically consider generate these wave loads and we can verify it with the static effect or time story the dynamic effect that's all for the today's webinar thank you very much for your attention if you have any question you can leave it in the questions board thank you